Hello. Well, I'm going to miss the first couple days of class. I'm going to be up in the mountains, but that's the nice thing about these online classes. I just want to give you a few tips before I take off and explain the reading list, etc. Um, first of all, this week is going to be about worldviews, paradigms, and defining the scientific method, since that will be a major part of what we'll be doing in this class. If you're not very familiar with worldviews, there's three major worldviews. The first is theism. This is found mostly in Western religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. It's a belief that there's a God who is both imminent, who permeates all things. There's no place where God is not. It has to do with his qualities of omnipresence, omniscience. The other quality of God is just the opposite and that is God is transcendent which means God is outside of or beyond creation. This applies to his sovereignty, his power, his holiness, etc. This God is also personal and has revealed his will um, through prayer, um, visions, scriptures, revelation, etc. So this is mostly found in the Western traditions and so when people have this world view, it's like they have these God goggles on, and when they look at the world, whether it's a flower, a blade of grass, a baby smile, etc., they'll see some aspect or evidences for God based on this world view. Um, the other major world view we'll be discussing is naturalism or materialism. Philosophic naturalism is a belief that all natural phenomena, everything that appears in the world, can be explained through a natural explanation. In other words, there is nothing supernatural. Everything can be explained by the physical material world. Um, this would also apply to philosophic materialists who believe all that matters is matter. Matter is the only thing that exists. There is nothing supernatural, only the natural. The other worldview, which I'll tell you, but we're really not going to deal with in this class too much, is pantheism and this would apply to most of the Eastern traditions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, etc. Pan meaning all, theism, God, all is God, or God is all. And this is the idea of emanation. Um, where in a naturalistic worldview, the idea is that life came from material, which is eternal, it always existed. From the theistic worldview, it's that God created the world separate from himself and in the pan and pantheistic worldview God emanates or the world is an outflow of God or a manifestation of God and even though pantheists are beginning to enter into the scientific investigation of origins at least for this class we'll just be dealing with theism and naturalism slash materialism okay now on to definition of science or scientific method Depending on your worldview, you're going to have a very different idea of what science or the scientific method is. I posted the ICE Institute of Creation Research website, and when you look at their link, basically to them, um, God is this super logical, rational being who made the world out of his brilliance, and he recorded his construction in the first two chapters of Genesis, and so they take it like a scientific textbook and they believe you can see evidences of this in the world and this is because they're looking at the world through these God goggles or God lenses. Um, the NCSE, um, when you look at the video I posted, I ex only expect you to look at the first hour of that, that would be sufficient. If you want to look at the second hour which is question and answers, that's fine. But that first hour, um, you'll hear science defined as um, the investigation of natural phenomena using natural means, which is very similar to our definition of uh, philosophic naturalism. In other words, the natural world can be explained through natural processes. And so, depending on your worldview, it's even going to affect how you define science or scientific method itself. And to give an example of this, if you'll go to Wikipedia and search um, creation science and read their statement on that and then look under discussion and see the discussion that's going on to how creation science should be defined 
And depending on your worldview, if you're a theist, I'm sure it will seem quite scientific to you. But if you're a naturalist, it will be pseudoscience at best, or religion, just bold-faced religion. And so depending on your worldview, it's going to have a huge effect on how you see the world and how you even define something like scientific method. I hope this kind of explains where we're going this week and why you got the reading assignments you did. I'm looking forward to your feedback. I should be back down from the mountains later in the week. So if you don't hear from me, that's fine. Don't, don't worry. Just post your questions on the discussion board and I'll try to get back to them and look forward to seeing the comments you make on the articles you read. Bye.